No, I haven't because I've just clicked. I'm live. I'm live. Yeah. Oh. oh, come on, early. Oh. Hi everybody, if you're there, I've come on a little earlier, I clicked uh, start the live and I wasn't even ready, so have to bear with me a few, two, few minutes, <laughs> oh gosh, I'll be there now, promise. Right, more yours. <laughs> you have to play with me. Oh, right. Hello, Mr. G. Hi, John. Hi, sweetie. I'm just going to knock my sound off, otherwise, I'll have to ting, to ting. <laughs> oh, I was just getting ready to set up and I clicked go live now. Needless to say, it's only a few minutes early. So, hi, John. I don't think I've seen you. I may might have seen you before. Name looks familiar. If not, welcome, sweetheart. Um, hope you're having a wonderful weekend. We'll start your weekend, should I say? So I'll get my bits and pieces. Lucky I got everything ready. And while everybody's coming in, I will introduce everybody because we all got different names on YouTube, and I you can get. It can get um, it can get confusing with all the different names. So bear with me two seconds. <laughs> I can't believe I went live. I was doing it. I was like, have I just gone live? <laughs> I'm sure I've just gone live. Right. I'll explain what I've got while I'm waiting on everybody to come in. Hi, Janet. So um, Mrs. G is Rian. And Janet is Janet. Uh, anybody else come in? I'll see. Debbie. Hiya, Debbie, sweetheart. Hiya, Jan. Um, let's see, waiting for everybody to pop in. in. Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Oh, I've even got my cup of tea. So that's how early I am. Usually I'm not bang on nine o'clock, but I was early. Does needless to say, you'll have me a few minutes early tonight. <laughs> no, this is my first visit. I thought it was because I, I thought I didn't recognize your name. It did seem familiar. So, whether I've seen it on different lives, I'm not sure. But welcome to my channel, sweetheart. Um, I hope you find this inspiring. And uh, yeah. We get lots of giggles. Who is Mrs. G? Mrs. G is Rian. Um, we haven't got anyone else with different names. No, Mrs. G is Rian. That's who Mrs. G is. I need a cup of tea. Anybody else like a cup of tea? <laughs> right, while I'm um, setting everything up, I'm going to get my finished it i've even binded it last week i made a sewing machine cover so you have to tell me if the picture goes or the sound goes or whatever so let me know as i'm going along but i made a sewing machine cover last week and uh and um i binded it i put some what they call it seam binding all the way around and it was in different colors so it's one of those um, sewing, co sewing covers that you tie on the side. So the way I've done the ties, I just wanted to share with you this. As as I was doing the seam binding, I made sure that the tie was on the inside and that it wasn't sort of out. Because when that goes over the machine, if you imagine, it ties 
that way. So I'll show you what it looks like. So all this is completed. <laughs> I love the feel of it. Uh, I'm drinking Dr. Pepper. Oh, enjoy, Miss Janet. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Um, so I did the um, sewing machine. Um, got a template off Google for that. So thank you, Google. <laughs> got a template off that, and then I worked around that. Um, the inside is all finished, and the touching on the ribbon I did last week, I did some uh, loop over. So it just touches it up, basically. Something a little different. And then on the back, which is would be the back of the cover like i say it's all seam binding and, and out and i managed to do it on my machine the seam binding all on my machine didn't have to do it by hand so i'm gonna do the same tonight and hopefully what i did last night i can show you all what i've done tonight a bit confusing but i'm hope we'll get there so on this one i've done three pockets and i've got some string three pockets so there's one there there's one year and then there's one there and then that's the top of the machine. So, yes, she's all done. Good afternoon, morning, morning, good afternoon. Six hours behind. Yeah, I think it's afternoon over in uh, USA, isn't it? So, good afternoon, Miss Dee Dee. Um, so, that's the machine cover done. So, to go with this, I did mention it to you all last week. Um, I'm going to make a, because I'm making the sewing machine cover for a sort of Sarah. So if she pops in tonight, she will pop in. Um, hi, Dawn. And I'm looking out for anybody else's names that are a little bit different to their original names for me to shout out to. So to go with that, I'm going to make a cover for the pedal for a sewing machine. Now, for anyone who's got a manual sewing machine i've got one when you're on the machine it's got a tendency to slide away even though that you can have grippers on the end but it has got a tendency to slide away so we're going to make um a little mat an anti-slip mat for the pedal to go on to stop that sliding so that's what we've got we're going to make tonight so i've got my fabric um i'm going to show you how i've cut it to the size i've also done some seam binding and I don't know why I've chosen black. It's this fabric. Um, it's got a bit of pink to it. And I just thought it would stand out against that fabric. And I've gone pink polka dot. So you'll only ever see that much of it, really, on the outside. So I've done some seam binding. And there's going to be loads left over. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my leftover seam bind if I've got any leftovers. So that's my seam bind then. Now, when I showed you this last week, everybody said, What is it called? So, what I've done in the description bar, hi Laurel, uh, what I've done in the description bar is I've let you all know what this is called. And in case anybody hasn't seen it there is a link as well but it's only a link to the uk but you can find these in um your pound shops i've been told by miss Didi that these over in the usa are for um lining of the drawer cupboards so when you've got a kitchen cupboard you put this at the bottom and then you would stack your tins up um but i'll show you what it's called in a second if i can get it up quickly it's called a non-slip mat. It's used for a kitchen drawer liner, a cupboard drawer liner. Um, sometimes you can put it in a car to stop the change bopping about. Um, you could even, and I've used it before for this reason. So say you've got a mat. Now, if you can see how my mat moves, say you didn't want it to move and you wanted pristine cut in. And I've done this before in the past is you can put this underneath your mat like so put this on top now that's not going to move nowhere and that's because of the type of mat it is so we're going to use that so now i've told you what all that is called because i i know i got some questions last week week about what it was called um where to get some from so i've left a link in the description 
like I say, is for UK. It's the cheapest one I found online for UK, but you can find them in your local um, pound shops. B&Ms do them. Um, overseas, you can find them in your local um, thrift shops, garage sales, that kind of thing. So there's that. There's my fabric I'm going to use. And I'm just making sure I haven't missed any video. Oh, hi, Aranji, sweetheart. Yes, I like the black fabric. I do too, Rian. I think it's a beautiful contrast up against that. I don't tend to use black, but I quite like the um, contrast of it. So I've got that, and I have got my seam binder I sort of made up. So to begin with, now, I have measured all this prior, but I want to show you how I've done it. So bear with me, because like I said, I did press. Oh, I did press the, oh, I'm looking for my, no, it's in the other room. I did press the live early. Never mind. <laughs> right. So, how to measure this up? Now, you can use a tape measure, which I can't find mine. My, I think that's what they call it, isn't it? Tape measure. I can't find mine. Mine's about. I know there's one in the living room, but I'm going to wrong me. So, now the longest point. So that would be the long. This would be the width of it. So, you're, I'm doing the longest point first. So my, um, this is why it's always good to have on the machine. Now that would stop on this line. If you can see that, that would stop there, right? But because I've also got, where's it gone? I've also made a crochet. Um, my word, have I lost it? Oh, please don't say I've lost it. I made a pink cushion that is somewhere around somewhere. Oh, I can see it. I made this right. So, the idea is that if I just did the mat underneath. No, it wouldn't slide, but what the foot might do is slide off the mat because there's not going to be anything here to stop it. So I've made a cushion. I've just stuffed this, rolled some, um, oh, God, my words are everywhere tonight. What's it called? Batten. I've rolled some batten, and I made this last week, and it's just rolled up, and then I've just sewn it. And then you want that sewn line sewn on the flat. I didn't go like that and sew it straight across because you would have ended up with two small sausages of that mix up sense and with a line underneath. So I rolled it flat like that and then I did that through my machine. So because my machine stops there, I want to give myself at least two inches if I can with my fabric. Maybe an inch, one and a half inches. I want to give it at least one and a half inches for the cushion to go there, because that's all it's going to need. And then whatever, whatever, how long you want to make it. Now this piece, because you'll need at least two one and a half inches for the top. This piece that I've cut measures nine inches and my foot pedal measures five and a half so i've got six seven eight and three and a half inches i had to count down three and a half inches to play about with so i want one and a half inches on the top and then the rest i want on the bottom now it's up to you whether you want to make two one for the bottom one for the top that might be a good idea to do or you just or if you wanted to do one i might do the two thinking about it because then my foot isn't going to go anyway it's not going to slide this way and it's definitely not going to slide up 
Um, so I'm going to make another one of these in a second. Then the width is on this lovely machine. It's measuring three and a half across, but that's not including this little black thing where the wire is. So probably measuring four, measuring four inches. So what I've done to get my width on my fabric, this is five and a half. So I've got an inch to play with, so half an inch each side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make one of these. Now, have a look. I want to show you how I made mine. I think that would be... Because I don't want it too big, but I think that one is going to be a bit too small. So I'm going to pop this one here. Then I'm going to make another one for the top. And that I didn't prepare for. So let me get some fabric out. This is the fabric that I used to make this little jelly roll. And let me turn my mat. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is a this mat father. Okay. Hi, Christine, sweetheart. I wondered where you'd got to. I haven't seen your name pop up in ages. Hope you're okay, my lovely. So I want to make it a little bit thicker. So my aim is probably that thick, I would say. A little bit wider than this. So I sort of doubled it. So I'm going to cut it there. Take my little ruler Okay, so I've now got now I should have a spare piece of it. Now I've now got two pieces measuring the same. I don't know whether I'll need the two, but I've got two. I can go my scrap pile. And I'm over there. Now I need some batting. So I have so I always buy my batting in twin size. Um it just makes to be honest, if um the batting I get it from is comes in ten pound, no, ten pound fifteen or I think it's twenty. And what I tend to do is buy the 15 because I'm using it all the time. It just makes sense to buy the 15. If you didn't want to buy the 15, you could always buy five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll. Make sure I've got the width now of this. Yeah, perfect. I'm just going to roll this to begin with. Just to get, and you can fill it full of rice as well. There, that's why I want the thickness of the top one to be. So I'm just going to cut. Get rid of my batter. Okay. And then we cut the edges off here and we can get together then and start cutting this up. So I'm going to really press hard on the button and I'm going to cut right through. Okay. 
it's taken a couple of goes because it's so thick because I've rolled it up. Okay. There's one on that side is a little bit okay. I think I need to just cut a little bit off that one now. Okay. So get my circle. And I'm not bothered by the edges because they're not going to be, you know, when time I put the batting on the seam binding, you won't see the edges. So, yes, it's going to show is the small one. The small one, you can see more fabric than you can batting. But again, it doesn't matter as long as I've got most of it cleared. So I want to put the roll in the center. And I'm going to in there. And then I've got a line then, my edges up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew as close to the batting as I can so it's not going to move anywhere. And to help me out, I've got a pin here and I'm going to put a pop. Like I say, don't worry about you seeing the batting each end because the, is it, is it called seam binding? Seam binding is going to go on anyway, so you wouldn't see it really. Right, those are my two clips. So that's going to be my first row. That's my second row, and that's going to trap my foot paddle in, so it's not going to move. Uh, it's good to hear your lovely voice, Claire. I'm doing it. Oh, thank you, Christine, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. Right. Let's get sewing. So, sorry if you get busy. I do apologise. Hopefully you can see. I've got a clear foot on here. Um, not for anything particular. Usually this foot is for embroidering. I'm not going to embroider tonight. However, oh no no no. Right. Hoping you can see. Sorry if I make you feel sick. <laughs> Watch that tea. I know I'm not good on when whenever I got tea on the table and I'm crafting, it usually goes everywhere. So I will watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna take a few sips out of it now. It's gonna go on the floor. Straight stitch. It's gonna be a bit tough to sew it, but try and go as close to the batting as you possibly can go. And of course, we need to keep it as straight as we possibly can. As well. Okay, so can you see? Can you see? see, you see? We have. Let me take a sip of this. The rest is going to go everywhere. Something sidetracks me. Oh, bless you. Right. So I know I've cut two pieces, but it doesn't matter. So to get rid of most, I'm not going to cut this off. No, I'm not. Because I haven't cut. I'm done this part of it. So because I want this to be a bit of a padding on it, I'm going to switch my side. Oh, actually, I can do with this side, can't I? Because I'm putting seam binding. Right, some batting again. I just wanted to have a bit of thickness. Um, let me just cut. Okay, move these out the way. Right, I'm gonna just cut this down a little bit because 
I'll do all most of my cutting once everything's put together. Right. Get my fabric and my pins we need. I've always put up obstacles in our way. A few things to finish, and every time I'm going to say I get it done, something sidetracks me. Oh, bless you, Christine. Life's got a really good thing of doing that when we want to do something, it always gets in our way. Always. I think I've cut mine a bit too short. But I want it doubled. I'm going to use that second piece I've cut. And I'm just going to pin it. Cut most of this away um, now and then I'll go into detail after. Because when you sew, whether you use batting or whatever you use, it'll move and it'll tend to move when you're sewing. So I won't go right up to the line, however I will cut most of it on my way just so that I've got enough to play about with. And I've used double, you know, I've made it a bit thick. Just cut some of this away. Again, I'm going crazy and cutting the entire thing. Okay, so we now have that's our place where our foot paddle is going to sit. So I'm now going to go around the edges and I'm going to stitch. I'm going to go from here all the way around, all the way around, and I'm going to stop there. Once I've done that, then I can begin to sew anything else on I want. So really creating our mat. And I'm hoping you can see what I sew. I'm bring you down a little bit more. Sorry if I make you feel seasick tonight. No straight stitch. And I'm just going in about a quarter of a way, all the way around. And I've got some um, using it's pink cotton but it's got a bit of a, a two-tone shade going on that going on move around sewing the top at the moment. The top will get to be sewn but not at the moment. Okay. So I have something that, that looks like that at the moment. So now I can do all these pins, take this all out so that's not going to go anywhere. Just gonna cut this off, and I'm gonna cut now. Cut the bat bat in away, because I know it's not gonna budge. And it's not gonna move. So that's the start to our. Uh, I'm gonna stop in a second and see what you're all talking about. While I'm speaking, um, every live I do, I always ask you all where you're watching me from. I have taken some of the matter away, but it doesn't matter. Um, where are you all watching me from? And what time is it where you are all at? Because I do wonder these things. Uh, she's really rocking this. 
Oh, bless you. Claire, you have some nice wee bits of fabric. Thank you, Christine. I know, I, I'm making you feel a lot seasick. I love when Claire says, oh, sugar. <laughs> the little things I say. <laughs> Oklahoma, USA, and it's 3.25 p.m. Oh, wow. Get rid of my bits and pieces. Some of these fabrics I will keep because I'll make my um, own fabric out of bits and pieces of fabric. If I'm making all these sorts of sense, I'm what I'm saying. I love to hear the clack clack of the sewing machine. Oh, bless you. I know my um, bobbin's jumping a little bit. When they clap, I'm going to come and watch the life from your house. And when you say, where are you watching from? I'll say behind you. <laughs> yeah, now no, that will be, be scary. Thinking chat and it's nearly half past nine. Oh, thank you, Pauline, sweetheart. <laughs> I can imagine her going, it's behind you. Right, I'm going to pop that. She would do that as well. I'm here, I'm behind you. <laughs> I can just imagine you doing that. Right, I'm going to pop that at the top. That is going to be our cushion to stop it sliding. And the cushion, the foot will make the cushion sit up. But if you didn't want it that to happen, you can always put um, a little stitch at the bottom. I might do. I push it up as it is. So first of all, I'm going to start by sewing this on the anti-slip shall i sew the anti-slip on first mm. i think i will i'll sew the anti-slip on first because i don't know whether it's you or not no i don't need to no i won't i'll sew this on first i'm just thinking no i'll sew this on first right uh cheshire and it's 20 when it's half past nine jan oh wow thank you jan sweetheart uh, wow cheshire has it been hot there jan recently in cheshire is it we've had um like uh, what was it the other day 36 degrees 36 and a half it was boiling the other day Today's been a lot cooler. Right, so I'm going to sew. Now I'm going to sew all the way across. And what I might do is I'm going to push this button up just a tad. And I'm going to sew my little stitch just on the edge. Now it's going to take some doing because I put, rolled the batting up. Because otherwise, if I don't do that, the pedal will push it up and then I'll lose the the one I want it to be so I'm going to stitch that first and then I'm going to come back to this and decide whether I want to um, do it or not so okay take the pins out as I go along as I go along. This isn't straight, but I'm not worrying about it being straight because the seam binding is going to go on there anyway. Right, okay. So we've now got something that looks like this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to just take the baton. Where's my seam binder? I'll be a little bit too thick. I'm just going to roll that back a little bit and I'm just going to cut a section off so that the side is not too thick for the seam binding to go around. Um, just roll it back a tiny amount. There. 
that way then when I put the seam binding on it's not going to be thick right now if I leave it like that what's going to happen is the pedal is going to push this back because I don't want that to happen what I am going to do is I'm going to roll this back as much as I want to let's go that way yeah and I'm just gonna pop some pins push it up pop some pins up there so that the machine pedal will sit there and I'll still got that cushion to help me with this button I'm just going to pop a couple of pins just to flatten it down a little bit okay right so as close to the um, little line I've made myself. I'm gonna take it down a little bit. And when I get to the first pin, I'll take it out. All the while holding it down is a bit tricky oh i do beg your pardon just knocked you all out of place <laughs> it is a bit tricky to do this piece but like i said if i didn't do it then the pedal was just gonna push the pillow away so instead of it being a stop but it wouldn't act as a stop bar. okay show you now what it looks like so that's what it looks like now if i turn take all these pins you can kind of see now where i was coming from because if i hadn't done that it would have just pushed this back now what i'm debating is now I'm debating on where the two do the second cushion and I think I will because the, the pedal will push back even though it can't push forward So, like I did with the first one. Pop all these pins in. So I've got one at the front and one behind the pedal. And then... I'll push that back in a sack and then do it that way. Like I say, I am making you feel really seasick tonight, and I do apologise. My fabric's moved a little bit. Move it back and twist it a bit. Most of this will be hidden by the seam binding anyway. I'm making you feel a bit sick tonight. I do apologize. Right. So now all that's sewn up there now. So again, like I did that side. I'm now gonna decide how much. 
I want my petal to be and I think I'll have that much. And then use my clips, my pins rather, to pin this down. Just helps when I'm sewing the entire when I'm sewing that pushing that corner down. Make sure this is straight because this won't be hidden and then we'll be right there. Uh yes, beautiful countryside. Oh, what have I missed? What have I missed? That which is very nice with black and white timber buildings. Oh wow, Jan. I don't go to some beach very often. Wow. Sandwich, sand beach is a lovely place. Sounds amazing, John. Honestly, that's on. It sounds like um, it, you know what you would imagine a countryside to be like old buildings and like um an old town that kind of thing. That's what it reminds me of. And you're describing it. Sounds amazing. Move my pins as I go along. And the next one. Okay. So now we have done our cushions to stop our our stuff of pedal moving. That's not going anywhere. You could even put something on the back of that and call that a mat if you didn't if you wanted to. I mean, you don't have to do the anti slip, um, but I just think. And by the way, um, Jan, just for you to know, that's not my husband snoring. Somebody did say that once. That is my dog. <laughs> That's my dog snoring away. He does that quite often when I'm on lives. He doesn't want anybody to forget that he's there. <laughs> so he just snores. Right. The anti slip. Yes, Ted, you tell him. <laughs> the anti slip. Now, I'm going to. I don't know whether I can sew this on the machine. I'm hoping that I can. Um, but I'm not sure whether I can. But we'll have a, a good attempt now in a second. But what I might do, and this is what I tend to do with, with things I'm not unsure about or never done. Like I've never made a foot pedal for a machine. It's just because I was making a sewing machine cover and it dawned on me that when I because I got my basic machine out the other day I so it dawned on me whether I could make a pedal for the machine so now I've got my basic size like you can cut this to any that's the beauty about it it's got holes between so I'm just going to take a snip of my little piece and I do have do, do, whatever. let me move this keyboard right I do have I do have a piece of fabric that I want to see if I can sew it onto my material and this is what I tend to do with things I'm unsure about so I don't know where. Let me do it that way, because I got a funny feeling. If I it is sewing, but it's quite tight because the of course this is anti-slip. If I did it that way, the feed dogs won't allow me to do it so I think I might have to sew it by hand it is doing it but I think I'd be better off sewing it by hand so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to pin all that in place. And when I'm going to do that at the last second. Um, I'm going to do my seam winding first, and then I'm going to do that in the last second. So my seam winding. Now, it did this on the sew machine, and it worked perfectly. So I've just cut. Now, these are three-inch wide pieces of fabric cut like that three inches and then I've just done it alternatively and then folded it in half I've also used some spray starch to give it that bit of a stiffness I know I watch all your Tilda videos oh wow did you Jan did you enjoy them oh wow thank you for watching them firstly did them a while back so I did enjoy doing them. I did them on my 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 basic sewing machine. So I'm gonna pin. Now I've got my clips. This is how I did it on the machine. I was so well shot yesterday that it didn't mess up. And if I do seam binding at all, I miss stitches. So what I did, I put it on and I felt one side and I felt where it was the other. I judged it with my hands. There. Put the half. There. I'm just gonna move get this right now. Put one there, and then to do the corners, you open this out to my dazed head. It's not opened up, that's why it's not working. Oh, it is. I'm opening it and I'm just folding the edges in on each other. And I'm going to sew that on by hand. That anti slip. Only because, because of it being anti slip. I'm not, I don't know whether I want to push it going through my machine. Now you can iron them in, but I tend to mine, iron mine in a half and then sort of work it out from there. So I'm going to put a clip here once I go where I want it to go. myself out a little bit here. You can say it is a bit tricky because we've got sort of two pillows to contend with. Somebody once said that that was um, my husband snoring. That's why I said if you're wondering what that noise was, it was my dog. And she said, is that Chris snoring? I was like, mm, no. Right, so if you notice, I haven't done the corner. So what I tend to do for the corner, I've pinched it in the middle, so it's not going to go anywhere. I tend to fold it, go up, and then sort of fold it to make my curve. So I've got my curve one side. Now there is a special way of doing this. This is just the way I do it. Amen. Fold it like that and then fold it over. I'm trying to work out how to do it. Um wait a minute. No, I've done it wrong. 
I'm just going to do it this way. There's a way where you can fold it once and then you can get the fold. I've forgotten how to do it. So I'm going to just do it like this. Like I did the sewing machine. Get my two folded edges. There. So I want them. There. There. Thank you. Like I say, this is a bit fiddly, but it's totally worth it because you'll have no um, raw edges. Those pins aren't doing anything. done this I think I've done enough to go all the way around but we'll see now if I haven't I haven't all right fold it on the fold I'm gonna pop one in just to keep it in place while I sort out the corner one there and there's one here and I might have to feed it through my machine a little better and um, help my machine out because it's going over quite thick fabric Notice. Does anybody else struggle with seam binding? I I struggle with it a lot, and I can never find um I really struggle with seam binding. I need one of those stick of chasing my foot pedal all over. Well, this is the reason. See, I was making a sewing machine cover. My inspiration came from making a sewing machine cover and Sarah had given me all the measurements she, she wanted for the machine cover and I was like, all right, okay. So I was like, and then she showed me a picture and as most of you will know, even though I use an electric machine, I've not always had my electric machine. Um, I tend to use my basic machine for, you know, I do go back to it, but to use um, a manual machine, you tend to start chasing the foot pedal all over the floor. And I was like, oh, right, okay. So, and when I made the cover, I was like, can I make anything to go, to go with this? Or is this it? Can I make something to go... And that's where my inspiration came from. And though Chris, I had bought the anti-slip for the Chris's keyboard because he was like, oh, I've had a bit chasing my keyboard all over the place. So I was like, all right, I'll buy you, um, I'll buy you an anti-slip thing to go on your keyboard. And then when it came, he said, oh, I don't really want it. And that's where my idea came from. Um, so, and they're quite easy. I've never made one. So I've only gone off. So what's in my head really but saying that i would imagine they're easy enough to do and i think correct me if i'm wrong but i i would imagine that most foot pedals are the same um shape oh i've done and i just have enough seam binding to go all the way around so i'm gonna go down this way fold it Flip it there to 
heap it there and then I'm going to sort out this corner like I sorted out the rest of them. There's one, there's two. So yeah, foot peddlers is mind of its own and it, it tends to go for wonders, I will admit. Right, pop that there. Like I say, I'm going to have to help my machine out a little bit going over these um, cushions. Right, now I'm coming to the end now where I began. So if I cut it there, I'm not going to have enough to sort of underneath. So I want to cut it in the middle of here. And there's a reason for me. I'm going to leave, keep that as well. So I'm not going to get rid of it. So the reason for me keeping that as is, you want to tuck the end in so you don't see it. And then bring this. I might have done too much. It doesn't matter. Bring this over. And then clip that all these edges in first hmm. right bring that in there in make sure you're happy with it all the way around right so now I've completed all that it took me half a day to do um give yourself a couple of minutes just make sure that you're happy where everything is and that you don't want to change anything and i'm just gonna have a fiddle on the back just right here because i know that i've really loose that's about more like it One is two. Right, let's sew. Hi, Carol. Being aboard the anti slip mat. Woohoo! Hey, um, I need one of those. To... Wow. Well, when you won't be there long, I promise. Right, so I'm going to start where I've sort of stopped and started. And I'm going to take my foot right to the very edge of it. I'm going to clip that one clip and I'm going to go a couple of stitches in and I'm going to clip the other clip. And what I did with the um, sewing machine is I put pressure on my fingers here. I'm moving you a bit closer. Put my pressure on my fingers here. So I'm always stitching about that, way, that far away from the edge. And then when I got to you, I unclipped the other clip and I made sure that I was on the next bit. Now, like I say, going over these is going to be a bit of a challenge, but I should have changed my foot really. Back and forth a couple of times. I'm going to twist it and then sew diagonally and then just check the 
back. If I've missed a bit, then I can always go back over that with my um, either hand or I can go back over it with the machine afterwards. the anti slip and slide mats I have left a link in the description bar below um, yes it is just for UK see how it's on it's I've sewn that edge and um, the back's not gonna be seen this is how I did my seam binding for the back of my sewing machine cover and it seemed to work because I got both sides. I'm going to undo that clip, keeping pressure the whole time, just here. midway now all the way around and it's totally worth it because for a small little thing like this it does take up now my fabric's starting to do this let me show you on something else where's my piece of piece of scrap so my fabric is starting to go like that that's what I don't want. So what I'm doing every now and then, I'm lifting my foot up to release the fabric to go straight. Just a little tip for you. This is looking good. Thank you, Pauline. I'm using the completely the wrong foot as well. My foot I'm using is an embroidery foot. I should have got um, my other foot out of my cupboard. That would have easily gone through. foot I should have been using. And I'm going back and forth on these corners just to secure the corner even though I will do go over it with the, the um, diagonally in a second anyway. you there and I'm going to show you what we've got so we've got the pillow um have a look on the back where I've missed so I've missed here and I've missed there but apart from that that's what it's looking like this was my first time watching a live on YouTube oh Carol uh yes me too not watched a live before oh bless you they're cool to watch while you find any kinds of tutorials on youtube oh bless you guys thank you so much i'm glad i'm your first person you're watching live so those gaps i'm just gonna pull in but i'm gonna turn it the other way so 
I want to pop a couple of pins. Pop one there. Like I say, the back's not going to be shown as much. Because I want to be sewing the anti-slip on there. And I missed this section. I can get it through. So apart from that, oh, I missed this bit there. And because I've got this, this pillows, as we want to call them, these, my seam binding isn't going to be as straight as it could have been, if that makes any sort of sense. So let me share with you now um, my little things. So I'm going to just sew that edge again. So let me take these pins out. And I'm going to make sure my needle on my machine is where I want it to be. Because the last thing I want to be creating is two separate lines of stitch lines the other side. And I'm just going to take it, I may as well take it all the way up to here. There's our line there, and then I'm going to do these stitches on this side. Okay, so we have, sorry for making you seasick, I do apologise. So we now have our cushion, so I'm going to cut off any, like, and my star and threads because my machine does cut my threads for me but it doesn't cut the star and threads so all i want to do now to secure these corners is i'm going to sew in diagonal that will be then the cushion sits for the pedal to go on and as you can see i've left enough gap let me show you i've left enough gap that it sits flush but I've left enough gap for this to still be usable. Because the last thing I want to be doing is that, or I want the cushion to be right under. Because you, whenever you're pushing on your foot, you, you want it to sort of come down. So it's not going to move anyway, because it's now supporting by those two cushions each side. So the, the couple of things we need to do first, we need to sew our corners in. You can decorate this with lace or whatever you want to do. You can even put flowers on. But... It's only my thought, since it's going to be, um, a foot's going to be on it, and it's going to be on the floor, it's going to be a lot untidier than, let's say, uh, the cover. And so I'm not going to bother with any lace or flowers. But that's not to say you couldn't, but that's just my opinion on them. Yeah. Okay, cut these threads off. I guess you could even have it just like this if you wanted it. Right, so that's our, our cushion done. Right, now we need to attach our anti-slip mat on there. So, like I say, I'm not going to push it through the machine. So I'm going to turn it that way. And I'm going to pop a couple of pins in the middle. So these have got holes in this anti-slip has got holes in so it makes it a lot easier to sew and I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do so I'm going to make sure that my anti-slip is more or less on there I have a doll needle that I'm going to sew with um, let's 
So this is a five and one eighth inch of a doll needle. It's quite, it's quite a big doll needle, but I did want a big one. And I'm going to use my strong thread, if I can find this one. I'm going to use strong thread to attach this. Okay, my first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut quite a lot of thread off of it. Perfect. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do what they call, I think they call this a blanket stitch, but correct me if I'm wrong. And all I'm doing is I'm going over and over the fabric. over and over the fabric and i am pushing my needle as well not just through the holes of the anti-slip but i'm also pushing it through the um anti-slip itself so i'm going to push you down as far down as i could possibly get you shouldn't have done it this long really in mind Like I say, um, when I did it on the machine, or as you all saw, because it's anti-slip, the dog feet, the dog feet, dog foot, might struggle to bring it through. Let me cut some of this thread off. Might make it a bit easier. Actually, I'm going to use a smaller needle. See if it works better for me. Use my smaller one. There. So I'm doing this all the way around using some strong thread going through the gaps as well as through the um, through the, the, the anti-slip as well. So I'm going through these squares and I'm going through the gaps. And this will create a lot stronger stitch. I think they call this a blanket stitch, but like I say, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure that they call this a blanket stitch. I'm sorry if you're watching me, this is a tedious thing. I'm going to do two sides on live and then you'll see what what will end up happening. I'll do two sides on live. I won't bore you half to death watching me sew all four sides. Because it would be boring if I did that. So I haven't got anything to show you, share with you what I've been creating. Oh, oh, I have, but oh, I have, I have, I have. However, do you want to see what I've been creating? This, it is for a swap. Any small thread. It is for a swap. However, I'm sure Miss Sarah will mind me showing you some of it. Would anybody like to see what I've been creating? Just thread my thread again. I've done it double this time. And while I'm 
talking away and so on. I've um I have been watching somebody oh Vian says yes please share with us what you've been creating. Right, okie doke, I will do then. Well um while I do the two sides. I have um been watching this lady on YouTube. Didn't realise she was putting up videos because YouTube is playing around with my settings. Um, they've not my notifications off to many of the sub channels I'm subscribed to. So I'm not getting any notifications anymore about whether you're putting videos up. So I'm having to unsubscribe and subscribe back up to you. I'm going to cut this down ever so slightly. Um, and this lady has got a challenge going on. And her name is the Scottish Crafter. Um, she is, I believe it's going on to the end of July. Um, but I'm sure if you wanted to take part, that all you had to do was send Sam a message. And her challenge is to make a journal. So if you are loving making journals at the moment, then her challenge is all about that. Like I say, I'm not going to bore you half to death. Sit and watch me so. Surprising myself how quick I'm going, actually. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I have got something to share with you, what I've been creating. Um, it's, I will do a proper video on it. Oh, I could do. Should I do a proper video on it? Or should I, do you want to see the whole thing? Did the same to me. Oh, they're not for notifications. I, oh, I don't know what it's doing. I didn't even realise Sam was putting up videos. And it was only by conversation that I had with the lovely Miss Rian the other day. And she said, oh, did you see Sam's video? I was like, Sam hasn't put videos up. Yeah, she has. And I was like, what? So if you have seen, haven't seen me on your channel in a while, that's the reason why. Because no, my... For some strange reason, no fault of my own, um, YouTube is knocking my notifications off. So, like, I'm going to go finish this little bit of thread and then I'm going to show you what I've been creating. You get the idea of how to sew this on now. And it will need to be hand sewn on. Because, like you say, because it's anti grip, your sewing machine might spit it back out at you because it's it's not meant to go through a machine but a blanket i'm sure this is called a blanket stitch i'm sure it is i'm gonna go and get one i've been creating now in a second Oops. i'm gonna finish my th what i've got on my thread And then you, and then I'm going to get what I've been creating. But as you can see, now if you wanted to do a couple of stitches in the middle, of course you can do that. I'm not going to bother because I know that the stitch I'm doing at the moment, it's going to, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to do the last of this, whatever I've got on the needle. And like I say, these can be picked up from your local pound shop. Come on, Colette. 
Does anybody else know for any challenges that are going on that I can shout out? Because please say, because YouTube is such a big place, that um, we don't always see what's going on. a couple of more stitches in this right i'm going to stop there so as you can see i've only got that and there to go but i won't do that on live i'll finish that and i'm not watching but as you can see if you do the blank stitch that's not going to come apart i've got down there and around there to go and then it would have been finished and then what you do with the um threads that you have over for me i'm going to tie them I'm just going to create little knots in them where they're not going to go anywhere. And if you do the blanket stitch, I'm sure it's called a blanket stitch. And like I say, I could be totally wrong in what I'm saying. But I'm sure it's called blanket stitch. Um, it's not going to go anywhere. And that will stop your pedal from going. So let me share with you what I've been creating. So as you can see, it's not going to go back. It's not going to go forwards. It's not going to go anywhere so that's how i would do it and you can do a few stitches in the center if you want but by the time that's sewn on there's no need for the stitches in the middle but it's totally up to you whatever you wanted to do and that will go with the machine cover now let me share with you what i've been up to um oh i don't know what to show first mm. go on then and i'll share with you one of my things I've been up to, well, I'll share the two of the things I've been up to. So I will do a video on this because I'm doing this for a six-way swap. Six-way swap. And I've got that to share with you. And I've also got ah, this. This to share with you. Ready? Looks awesome, Claire. Thank you, Janet. Love your projects, Claire. May have to try this on my pedal. Oh, brilliant, Laurel. I'm so glad I've inspired them, you ladies, because it's it's one of those things that you, when you sew, you think, I really, really could do with something that stops my um, pedal from slipping. And then you stop sewing, and then it goes up your head. But I promise you, it takes a matter of minutes to do. And within an hour, you've got something that will stop your pedal from moving. And like I say, um, do it all the way around, a little blanket stitch. And not just go through the holes, go through the actual slip mat itself. And I've actually got loads left. So, you know, you could even, um, as a, just a little thing, you could put this under your machine as well to stop it slipping um if that's what you, your actual machine if that's what you wanted to do but there's loads you could do with that but have a go because it, it they are really handy to have a go at so let me share with you a couple of things i've been creating since you all wanted to know thank you don marie um 31st of july is the end of sam's channel so thank you Marie and sweetheart i'm definitely making this i'll bless you Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Carol. It's good. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Rian, sweetheart. Right, I'm going to share with you two things that I've sort of been creating. Um, one of them is for a six-way swap. Um, so I will do it. I've got to do a video on this because not everybody watches the lives. And um, I know that mary's looking out for the video rather than the live but i want to share with you what i've been creating so this is um six-way swap mary run the six-way swap so there's six ladies and you had a paper page so you had let's see if i can got one oh i have you had a paper page to create so you had four pages to create and then you had a fabric page to create so this is um, Alice in Wonderland. It was Lynn Bentley that I made this for. 
and her the, the journal but she is making is alice in wonderland and the idea is you make the page for different ladies that diff wanted different journals so you had one josephine wanted shabby chic lynn's doing an alice in wonderland mary's doing vintage sewing lynn nooks is doing gypsy i'm missing someone who am i missing oh um debbie is doing woodland so i've done a woodland one as well and i have done various videos on it but the this one i haven't done as of yet because i only finished it i think it's last night and night before um so yeah i'm looking forward to sharing with you so this is an alice in wonderland this was made for um lynn bentley and she wanted alice in wonderland now i went off i have my next i went off this uh, dvd i have done um lives on dvds before and i know you all love it when i do lives on dvds um a it gives you an idea of what kind of things are on the dvd if that's what you want and b it shows you how they work so um i have bought a dvd actually it's a craft cd um that i'm waiting on coming through the post and when that comes then i'll do another video on it so i did this uh, page uh, off this DVD and it's called Journey to Wonderland 2 Dimensional and the other thing I used as well was Alice in Wonderland Artie Mays now she has done she's got an Alice in Wonderland um, it's like a paper this paper ephemera all kinds of things and it's on Etsy and it's a PDF which means you can print it out as many times as you want um, so Alice in Wonderland theme in mind. So, oh, I'm excited to show you. <laughs> right, okay. So, we have Cheshire the cat. I think it's called Cheshire the cat. Is it called Cheshire the cat? Well, anyway, got him down the bottom. And uh, he came off the DVD. And I haven't inked. I've inked a little bit on the edges, but not gone too mad with it. But the one thing I loved doing, I'll show you on live, is I've got a stencil. Where's my brush gone? Let me find my brush. Right, I want to show you something that I've been doing in my and the journal pages I've been. So this is walnut stain, and I'm using these. Um, they're called contour brushes now. You can buy them from Amazon. They are a little bit expensive, I thought personally. So what I've done, um, and I recent, when I found out about these, I watched somebody and they said, "This is where I got from. This is the Amazon link." And when I went on, I was like, "I was like brushes, really that much?" And I'm like, I was debating. They were in the basket. I was debating, but I really wanted to try one. So I went into the pound shop, and I. Think I think there was three in a pack for a pound or two in a pack and I used one obviously for my makeup and the other one I kept and used for my ink and I'm going to get more actually because they're kind of cool to use so this is walnut today I'm going to make sure that I'm totally away from my fabric because the last time I did this I had fabric on paper right and this was a stencil i had given to me i can't remember that's bad really in there who gave it to me but i know i had it given to me so all that stain and all you do is go over it with the stencil and it creates that now I've been loving doing that. I must admit, I, I've been loving doing that. So, um, now stencils can come in different shapes, different sizes, and I can't remember the name of this stencil. I'll get it out the pack now because I've actually got the original packaging. So I will show you what it's called. But that is the shape that it makes. And the other thing I want to share with you just kind of look if I've got any paper I have is say you do on a corner because this has got for example if I did this you've got I'm gonna have 
I didn't do too much in groom there. I'm going to have a line of where that stopped because it's quite narrow stencil. So the other thing I've been doing is inking in the corner down the center, moving my stencil and inking next door. So it actually looks as if I've got a corner stencil rather than a rather than a straight one. Um, let me get the this is this you had it this is called it's a um, stitch on craft designer borders and it's a celtic stencil and let me see if i can find the so this is the number so it's xcu 2691301 See if I can stitch that in, stitch that, write that even in chat. This is the product code, so it's a uh, we on um, XCU two six nine one three zero one, and it's stitch and craft designer borders celtic that's what it's called those wondering what it's called so so i've been really enjoying using that right so alice in wonderland my Cheshire the cat that sits at the bottom so there's rain space there so behind him I made a um, little um, like a little pocket and behind him is Alice in Wonderland the postcard and again I've used the same stencil and you can sort of see on there where the stencil comes out that one came from the CD and I haven't done anything. Some of them I've left blank. And then I've put a little heart, the Queen of Hearts, um, little die in. So there's a couple of things on here. So this one says, just for you. This one says, open me. And this one says, open me. And what do I do with this? Oh, I'm so excited to show you. Is you open it out. And it does have a key in there. There's the key. To Alice in Wonderland. What I've done, I've done it as if Alice went down and she all she sees at the top is his feet. So all this is right in space. So I've done all the doorways here and the key it just dangles there. And of course you can see the lock the other side. I was so excited to show you that. So that's what I've done on the first page. And like I say, there's lots of writing space here because I sort of thought if I'm doing all this, where's the writing space going to be? Um, so I've done the writing space here. They all pop back in like so. Just show the cat goes there. Then the other side then is the key. Cheshire the cat is up the top again, and I've just put um, some small clock pieces, they are tiny and things in there. And it says, good luck on your new adventure. I've got all the bunnies and the rabbits and whatnot. And then at the bottom, I've got um, a little envelope. This came from the CD. Um, and then in the envelope, I've made like a little booklet with the same stencil on. Um, this came from Pinterest, I believe. It says Alice in Wonderland. Then I've got these. They're just little, little cards, little writing cards. And then the back one um, are little stamps. And I think I bought these off of Etsy. I can't even 
remember where I bought these, but they were off Etsy, and I thought you could cut them individually out and use them as is. And I've done a stencil at the bottom and a stencil at the top. So that's my thing, and they tuck in there. And of course, you can use all this as rain space if you want to. We'll pop that back in there. Awesome. I love it. Claire. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Carol. I love that doorway. Thank you, Rian. You're awesome with your paper creations. Claire. Oh, thank you, Laurel. Thank you, sweetheart. And then on the back, I'll keep the last page on video. Um, on the back is what you could see it was the little key um key lock and i've got a couple of things so i have first of all i've done two cards and i've done some stencil now i did try and draw well i i made the mistake of drawing it with my i can't remember what they're called now they're not called stamperia pens what are they called the big clumpy things oh i can't think what they're called but i i used them on that i done like little notes so she could write on the card if she want to and again i've used the same stencil on there this one it says have a wonderful time um then i have got alice in wonderland herself the little charm the standalone from that little heart die oh behind the heart die is these so i've got a spare tag that i've got nothing on because again i wanted some writing space for her there's another little like little postcard thing behind there that pops in behind there like so then the, behind each card are more ephemera so i have more of those sort of small little stamps and again i've used the same stencil on the back then i have what else do i have another little ephemera piece I've just done some inking, a little bit of inking on the back there. Then I've got this little tag. Now, I've got this from Pinterest. And then I've done that on the back there. And then I've done, again, I've done a little this little book out with those same stamps um, that I found on on Etsy, I found them on Etsy. And then on the top, this top card, I have some teacups. They're like little picture frames. And some of them I think, some of them I have. And this one again, I found on Pinterest. So I've snipped all the way around and inked the edges. That was that. Okay. So that, and then it's also, if I turn it around the other way, because everything was upside down in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, wrong way. There's also a pocket here, because in Alice in Wonderland, everything, at one point, everything's upside down. So I made it so that there was a pocket there, and it doesn't fall out because of the way I've put it in. So that's what I've done there. I have done the last page, but I'll, I'll do that on video, and I'll show you on video what I've I've done on the last very page. I'm teasing a little bit, but I know Mary's not gonna. Right, so that's my Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> right, that's Alice in Wonderland. And the other one I've been working on is. Wait a second. Um, here's my vintage sewing. And this one is for Mary. Um, remember I said it, each person had a different theme and you made like a paper or a fabric page for each person. So that's what I've done. Let me tie that in a bit more. So I'm going to move that on my way. So this one is vintage show. And Mary's theme that she's doing is um, wonderful entry for Sam's challenge. Your ideas are amazing. I, do you know what? Sam's Challenge, you've had to make a journal, didn't you, Don Marie? This isn't for Sam's Challenge. I'm gutted, really, because I could say I didn't see your videos. Otherwise, I would have done a challenge. But um, I have emailed her because I haven't had notifications. But this is for a six-way swap 
but um Mary emailed me and asked me back in March time would I be interested in doing this and each person has a fabric in that theme and they also have a paper in that theme and then when everybody gets their pages they put the book together and then they've got a book um that everybody's made a two pages each for their book um and Mary's um theme was sewing vintage sewing so this is what I've done for vintage sewing so again I'm going to show you three pages and leave one to the very last so um the front page I've done some stamping uh, I used quite a lot of Lorna's um ephemera now Lorna is Taylor made journals my word Taylor made journals and she is on Etsy um she is on YouTube not you yeah she's on YouTube and she's also on Facebook um and she makes amazing journals and she has the most amazing ephemera and again her ephemera is on Etsy and you can print and keep the PDFs and then you can print them at your own leisure then so most of this is from that collection so it, i think it's called vintage so and i'm sure it's called that of some sort of you no know, some sort of idea so i'll start from the bottom work my way up the top um vintage show and did a lot of embroidery stitches as well on my machine now this piece uh, i'm sure it came from lorna some of it's come from lorna Again, some of it's just what I've got in my own stash. So this piece, it's got the old, I don't know whether the camera will pick it up, but it's got really old um, pattern stitches on there. So it's got like a little small zigzag stitch, lots of different stitches. So what I did with my machine is I took some of the stitches because I've got some on my machine and I went over it in pink thread and I just threaded and embroidered some pink stitches on top of the stitches that were there the same ones and then i've also stitched now this piece of cotton is vintage cotton i bought um an old wheel of it off ebay so i've attached some of that this opens out and this is plain on the other side but again it's all right in space at the end of the day so this piece um it's like a little mini folder and it's got the cotton reels on one side and it says um it says something in french i can't pronounce <laughs> but <laughs> smooth and strong thread anyway <laughs> so i've stenciled on that side with my big sewing stamp um so that's that piece then behind you is a pocket. Now, most of what I've added in here are old vintage patterns, something like that, because um, Mary said she liked vintage sewing, so I went with more patterns rather than the sewing sort of side of it. So what I've done is I've got, first of all, I've got a um, tea-stained tag I've put in for her to write on. And then this one, um, again, is from the lovely Nora's collection. And it gives you like different patterns for different things. Now I'm sure this, I can't think what kind of pattern is for, but anyway, it's for pattern for different things. So on the inside, I've stitched a bit of lace and I've got old um, style writing on the inside. And I've just gone over it like I did with the stencil earlier. That's how I've gone over it with that. So that's writing space. Now on the top, again, there's a pocket behind the second uh, pattern. There's a tag, another tea stain tag that um mary can journal on this is another pattern from the same collection lorna's collection um so it says pattern and it's for butter rick design so i think it's to make a little dress or for the doll child and infant's dress that's you are and it's got all the measurements so i thought that was kind of cool and sort of went with what the theme was on the back i left it quite plain because i thought mary could journal on i didn't do any stenciling although i might go back and do some old-fashioned writing just to see what i fancy and then behind there is 
use another one of these um, old designs, except this one is to make for a man. And um, at least I thought it was until I read the dress bodice at the bottom. Anyway, I thought it was for a man. Anyway, so I've stitched. I've got some um, real small pieces of leather. So I've stitched some leather on the top. And then the inside, I've done it so like it was like a sample book. So say somebody's given, um, in my mind, I was thinking that they gone into a shop. This is what was going through my mind. They gone into a shop and the customer's gone, right, what colours have you got? And they've gone, those are the colours we've got and those are the colours we can do. So that is what was going through my mind when I sort of went through. And that's why I've done sort of three different um, leather. So there's like a dark blue leather. There's a smooth uh brown one and then there's the old-fashioned um tailored brown one so that one was going through my mind when i did like a little sample book love the sewing theme my first job when i left school was a sewing industry i first worked for john temple stoots then for booby making the famous ring oh my words carol did you really well oh my word you make amazing things, so I can't. Wow, Charlie learns something new every day. That's amazing. I bet you and your element working for those type of things. Wow. Um, behind each pocket, behind this one, I've done a sample of laces, and the first one says, "So again, a for a sample, as if somebody went in the shop." So some, the top one says. The outside of the skirt, the middle one says for the bottom, the bottom of the skirt, and then I left the bottom one blank. Again, all going through my mind as if it was a sample, somebody's coming in and asking what lace they could add on. Um, so that is what I've put on the first page. We pop these back in. I can't believe you used to work and work make those ring coats. That is amazing. They all tucks in like so. Right. Let me show you the next page. So the next page doesn't really look as if I've done a lot. But I promise you there's lots of writing space. So the first thing I've done is I've used an old vintage showing pattern. I've got a few hanging about and I was like, oh, what shall I do with them? I'll keep them. What shall I do? I'll keep them. And it was like getting to a stage where it was like, I can't keep keeping everything. I've got to use it. So what I've done is I've used those some of those vintage patterns. So the top one folds out, and I printed this on tea dyed paper. So that's why it's all sort of wrinkly. So again, um, from Lorna's collection on vintage showing, and then the top um tea dyed paper but i left the top blank i didn't stencil it and have an ink there just left it completely as it was i've stitched um some lace on the top so mary's got all the writing space here i have done some of the stencil work using this stencil going across and as you can see some see some stitches so this flips up and I'm going to pinch a tag from the front just to show you something. So this looks up. I've, because this was a little bit flimsy and I thought, oh, it's going to break. And I did accidentally tear it on the side. And I thought, oh, I've torn it now. That's it. It's gone. But I thought, no, because vintage sewing patterns usually have got tears in them because they're bit, they are that old. So what I've done is I've tea stained some paper and i've gone round in like different stitches and i've left the bottom completely blank so there's a writing space and there's a pocket so it's not going to come undone because it can stay there so i'm going to leave that there because mary will know it's there but all the writing space there and then there's a pocket here as well so i know teddy's really enjoying me telling me all these stories he's fast asleep ted that's really rude you know that <laughs> right the bottom as you can see I'm um, still sticking with the patterns and the stitches and um, 
Now, I wanted something different for the bottom. I've done the top all right in space, but I wanted the bottom to have some sort of ephemera, some sort of place where I had ticks, tucks and spots and stuff. But I didn't want to do like corner spots or anything like that. Not that there's nothing wrong with it. I just didn't want to do it for this project. So the, I'll talk about this first because there's something about this section that makes it a little bit unique. So this section, still sticking with the sewing theme, I punched out my little heart punch I've got. I had to be super careful with it because, of course, it's really thin, but I've done that. I've also stitched some fabric on the side here. And I had this lady, again, has come from Lorna's collection. I've stuck, stuck some vintage lace, um, some more papers, and there's a little um, advertisement about the bodice there, some more vintage lace. So this flips down. So you've got a flip up and a flip down. <laughs> and um, I've got some more fabric here this then comes out bearing in mind what I said right at the beginning about still sticking with the um, patterns and stuff like that so Ted, Ted wake up I've got something to tell you got something to tell you come on <laughs> just looking at me as I'm to say why have you woke me up right cut of measurement so this goes on about the bodice and about um how they would measure the bodice so again still sticking with the patterns i haven't done anything to the back so i left that quite plain then there's another picture of the bodice now i'm sure this is from lorna's collection but if it's not she's going to shoot me but i'm sure it is now i left the number underneath and i did have some writing to go with it i think there was Three, three different ones and I had writing to go with it so I left it just with the picture and I left the numbers underneath then um, this came from the pattern and I was originally going to do like um, a tag out of it but then I thought no because that to me looks as if it's a pattern of some sort so each section would be a pattern because it's all numbered and I just thought no, I'm going to leave that as it is, because you could write on the back of that easy enough. So this section is an envelope. Now, I made this with the lovely Miss Rian. We did a, um, a video not so long back, and um, Rian showed me how to do these envelopes. And because I had done the stamp of the sewing buttons and jar, and put Inspire in, it fitted perfectly well with the theme um i haven't put anything inside it um i could possibly put that inside it that's what i'll put inside it um but i thought i thought no that fits perfectly i'm gonna read some comments i love the sewing theme oh my mother made me wear blueberry coats when i was in infant school i hate them <laughs> i really like the sewing theme thank you janet thank you jan Teddy sounds like my husband every night. Teddy has competitions with my husband. They get louder through the night. <laughs> and I don't snore. And he does aggravate me when I go to bed. Shut up! <laughs> it's quite comical when we go to bed. So there's a pocket here. Oh, this is quite thin. So I'm going to pop all this in. And then I'm going to show you page three. And I'm going to leave the last page for when I film my um, video. That way then I know Mary will. Um, this is for Mary. We'll just see now. Can you pop that in there? Flip up, flip down. And then, of course, that comes down. So, the last page I want to show you, share with you, is this page. So, this page, I was like, oh, what shall I do? Now I've done all that on the second page, what shall I do? So I took my the last page and I made ephemera. So I put the page to one side because I was getting stuck at this point. And I made pieces, like ephemera pieces. And then I made two things. And I was like, right, I got it. So the first thing I made was this. Now, this was a section um, from 
Lorna's collection that I had printed out on tea dyed paper and then I used this stamp and I went over it as you can see I'm getting a bit obsessed with that stamp now but yeah stencil so I went over it with that stencil and then the top this bodice is that you see how that's the same one so this one I for the date there instead of underneath. I've used some vintage laces. I this is a separate piece of paper where you can write on. Mary can write on if she wants. And I've used some vintage laces here. This pops open. And this was the writing underneath those boxes. So it says ladies by base waist waist with a blouse vest tucked in a York outline and tucked fancy edge jacket the color of which may be omitted omitted i think it says so that was the writing i've used teeth stained paper and somebody once asked me how i get the circles on my paper i when i tea stained them i put them on a pizza tray and i put them in the oven to dry and that and when when it's dry then it comes out with the circles on and it looks quite effective um i had this stamp wearing around my stash never used it and i thought right that's it i'm going to use it so i've stamped there so i've touched that over then going back to here this pops out and i've used the same stencil here like i said i'm getting a bit obsessed with that stencil so this pops out and this is a mini little book that i made from the patterns um i've still got loads left over this was just as i was cutting everything up these were just the little cutoffs i had left over so the first thing i have done i'm going to take them out is i made two tags so from the pattern paper and i'm going to be doing this um how i've made this book on video um and i'll also be doing it on a live on someone's group on facebook but i'll be doing how i've created this and the the um the tags and this page on video so i will come back and show you how i've done that because um i thought as i was doing it i thought no I, i'm going to show everybody how i've done it so i've created two little tags and I've popped a, uh, some vintage lace at the top and tea stain paper, of course. So this is a little mini book. Um, I have, this wasn't originally stamped like that. That is my own stamp that I've created. And it does look as if it's always been there, but it wasn't. It was the bottom of where the pattern was. There's a section. So you've got the pattern, you know, the middle section of the pattern. I've just stamped on top of it, but it does look as if it's always been there. But no, that was me. So I've taken that over. I've used some vintage laces here and I've sewn it. More of my um, pattern paper. And again, see what I mean with this is with the pattern line. So I use that to create my stencil uh, stamp rather. So I've used some more of that. This flips open. I've got another one of those pattern pieces that I haven't done nothing with. I'm just going to leave as is. And then I created some vintage laces here, but I've created um, some embroidery stitches on the edges, just to give it a bit of a bit of difference. I embroidery stitch in the centre. More vintage laces here. The same embroidery stitch there. This then is open, so you could write on all this if you wanted to draw on it or add pictures in it because it's that type of paper, it would keep your pictures there. So that is my little sewing stamp, but I will come back on a video. Um, I'm going to do it before I send the books away, pages away, um, and show you how I've created this and how I've gone about creating that page. So those are my I have done four four pages um but i will leave the fourth one till i do the video so that's my sewing that's my alice in wonderland 
and a sneak peek at something else but this is only a sneak peek um for as you all know i've been making the sewing cover and the sewing pedal for sarah but we both agreed we wanted to make each other a harry potter notebook and um, so this is just a sneak peek at the notebook and again i'll do a video on go into more depth than how i've done this hi april i love how you've used the patterns thank you rian and um, so this is the harry potter notebook i'm going to give you a quick, quick glance so i've used some of the fabric i have in my stash and then the inside um it, that was originally a pillowcase so i've left that as well so I'll give you a couple of pages. So the first page is all about Hermione, her birthday is the 1979, her parents, skills, everything, of course. Uh, best friends, Harry Potter and Ron Weasley, hobbies, her wand, believe. So if anybody's a Harry Potter fan, you'll know um, that Hermione is like, she knows, knows practically everything. She's Miss Know It All, as they always say. So there's uh, another uh, page. The other page, I don't want to show you it all, so you can, I want to do a video on this one. Here's, where's that one I want to show you? If I can find it, I'll show you it. I've got things like, Oh, come on. I've got things like the Polyjuice Potion. Now, this was in my Harry Potter book. Uh, I wish I could get as much done as you do, Claire. Oh, Laurel. Oh, sweetheart. I promise you, this is taking a couple of nights, but I've just got bang, bang, bang. <laughs> oh bless i'm i'm not usually do things quickly i'm usually a slow crafter but <laughs> i trust me none of my stuff is hardly done <laughs> um polyjuice potion that um was how hermione wrote it in the film um so i've taken that out of i got a big huge harry potter book and I've taken that and I've written it in here. The other thing I'm going to share, and I've got pictures of Hermione and on and everyone else. The other bit I want to show you, like I say, if I could find it, I would show you it. Right? Is this? So this is Gillyweed information. Gillyweed was given to Harry Potter in. Fourth year, goblet of fire. So it'd be fifth year. I think, I think it's the fifth year. Cluster of stone, chamber of secrets, prison of Azkaban. No, I'm missing one. It's either fourth or fifth year. Um, and he was given to Harry Potter anyway to make him swim under the water. And if he didn't have the gillyweed, then he couldn't go and rescue Hermione or Ron, whatever you choose to drag up from the water because the mermaids took him. So anyway, Gillyweed um, was given to him. So what I've done is I've written it as if a Hermione's writing it. So it's a bit of a Hermione's notebook. Um, and this is going to be given to the lovely Sarah. She doesn't hardly even know that I've done all this. So it says, a nifty water plant that allows the person who eats it to breathe underwater. The districts, it's grey, green in colour, slimy, resembles rat tails. The facts gives a human fish-like properties to help a wizard witch to breathe underwater, likely to be formed in the Mediterranean Sea. And then on the side here, it says major help for Harry. Um, like I say, I've done it so that um, my mind is writing in it. And the information that I found out, most of the information here, I found out through Pottermore. Now, Pottermore is online. You can go on it. It's a free website. And it's basically what J.K. Rowling formed online. All the information about all the films, the characters, the creatures, the potions, everything. You can gather all your information on Pottermore. You go on there and it's you'll have more information on there than you will on the films. 
So the things that she missed out in the films and the books is on Pottermore and it's online and it's fantastic for anybody who loves Harry Potter, honestly. I It's like a source of dictionary of all the wizards and facts. So what I've done, it says, Gilly Reed, to be take, not to be taken lightly, be careful. And this opens up. Oh, please tell me I have a stitch there. I could own it, I have. Well, it did open up. Okay, I'm showing you because Sarah would have. Okay. <laughs> and it says, when Gilly Reed is eaten by human, it gives them fish like a Aptiburities, including gills to pro to process oxygen from water, webbing between the fingers and toes for easier swimming, removing the need for blinking and obtaining the cold temperature in water while under the while under the effects of gillyweed, one cannot breathe air with the lungs. There is some debate among herbologists as to the duration of the effects of gillyweed is fresh water various salt water but in fresh water a spring of gillyweed lasts for well over an hour so like i say all on pottermore and that's where i've done so i'll show you another page and that's it i'm going to show you no more I've done my video <laughs> so the last page i'll show you this is all about liquid luck liquid luck harry potter used in the prison no is it prison of azkaban i'm trying to think half blood prince because i like prison of azkaban anyway um liquid black was given um and you won it in a lesson and it's um you drink it and it gives you all the luck that you want so if you wanted to win the lottery you could drink it and win the lottery basically so all the facts i've had from Pottermore. so it says liquid luck is a magical potion that makes the drinker luckily for a period of time during of which everything they will attempt will be successful six months to stay before ready and then it gives you the directions and instructions on how to pro, pro, mix liquid luck and it says felix felix for less also known as liquid luck and then the other thing it says only to be used when absolutely needed and there's the picture of liquid luck so i have been busy um amongst other things um doing little bits and pieces um i will be doing separate videos on these and i'll be doing a video on this and you'll be able to see all the pages that i've created in my harry potter notebook um but yes the lovely sarah is having the harry potter notebook um and i am well chuffed i finished it and i can't wait to show you what's inside it really because there's other things that like i say most of the things i had from the pottermore website so yeah i really do hope you give this a go like i say sew all the way around with a blanket stitch and then your pedal will not be moving any time soon so i hope you really enjoyed i'm looking at my creations um the stories that go with it <laughs> the stories that go with it and um like i say these two was done for the six way swap and this was done for the lovely sarah and I'm really looking forward to Sarah having this Harry Potter notebook. She is a big Harry Potter fan. So um, I'm going to wish I could do and get as much done as you could. I'm just look in the comments to see if I've missed anybody. Hi, Abro. If I didn't say hello to you, sweetheart, good, good hello. <laughs> enjoyed your live in creations. Thank you, Janet, sweetheart. I enjoyed everybody's company tonight. Um, and I really enjoyed showing you all. Thank you so much for bearing with me tonight and um, for allowing me to sew something quite useful in Outlook Sewing Machine. Um, and like I say, I'm looking forward to showing you the rest. <laughs> um, and I will love and leave you now till next Friday. There is, before I go, before I disappear, um there is 
on one of my videos i shan't say which one but it's a video i've done this week um where you'll get a chance to win this bag of goodies um it's a video i've done this week that's all i'm gonna say there's a fabric in here there's spools in here um i've got two more bits and pieces in here and there's also warden so there's lots of different things um in here so please go and have a look at one of the videos i've done this week you don't have to send me anything it's not like that to enter the giveaway all you have to do is comment that's it um and it's open till next sunday on next sunday i'll reveal the winner so i'll be open a week and a half and um it's a video i've done this week it's like a hidden giveaway so if you've stuck with me right to the end you'll know that there's a giveaway in one of my videos i've done this week um and yeah there's lots of different bits and pieces let me just share with you some of the things i've got in here so i've got like a doily in here there's i think there's four or five spools there's a white dress mark chalk fabric lots of different things that is a navy like a, it's a dinner plate do you put your dinner plate on it's not a tablecloth but it's dinner plate more fabric this um is a shirt that i bought from the charity shop that i put in um some wadding that you can have a go at and then this fabric so there's my giveaway sam's challenge is open to the end of this month and uh, so if you're in the uk and have made a journal or you're making a journal or you want to go make a journal go and pop on over to sam's channel which is the scottish crafter and i haven't got any other notifications other than to say thank you so much for watching me tonight i've loved all your comments and all your feedback and um yeah you've really made my night so thank you so much and i'll um I'll see you all next week good night take care all and i will catch up with you all next friday at nine o'clock bye for now ladies bye